Wow, you guys are early. Didn't expect anyone would be here yet. Just uh, just brought down my pot of tea. Okay, Vol, nice to see you come back. Must not have hated the reading too much, so that's a good sign. Well, I mean, yeah, but I didn't want to like go live at the last minute, so I put up the starting soon with the countdown. Well, I mean, everybody was here this time, though, so, you know. No, I definitely don't want you to leave, Panda. I definitely want you to stay here. <laughs> you almost dropped your dinner. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I don't want you to. You might do something like burn down a hedge maze or something. I'm sorry that that happened, by the way. At least I assume that's what happened when you put the candles in the hedge maze, because you said don't do it. So the only thing I can imagine is uh, fiery conflagration just annihilated everything, which is really unfortunate. Yeah. I remember like one of the first like buildings I built in Minecraft, I built a house out of wood and I built a little stone fireplace and thought it was so cool that I put a little like permanent fire in there and then the building burned down horribly. It's like, no, my building, but no. Learn that fireplaces are not always a good thing. At least not in Minecraft. Kind of wish they had thinner blocks, kind of like the ones in Empyrean. Or, um, did something with the, uh, stretchy bricks like, uh, Starship Evo. Those look kind of cool. I'm hoping they make some good progress on that game because I'd like to try it out. I just I can't bring myself out to buy a game that's that early in development anymore been burned too many times. Anyway, um, so we should finish up Black Beauty today, which means new book on Wednesday, and maybe we'll do some gaming or something if there's time left. Um, so if there's any games you guys want to play, throw them out, or uh, I'll just pick something at random. Ah. Uh. I don't have my new computer yet, so it has to be a relatively non-demanding game in terms of like computer usage. But other than that, down to play some games with you guys after we finish. Uh, if you have any requests for the next book, put them in the book request channel in the Discord, and uh, I'll be going through those over the next couple of days, looking for the next pick. Snake, you want to play Snake? Like snake.io? If it's an in browser flash game, I might have to. Like the Nokia shit? I guess I don't know what you're talking about then. If it was an in-browser game, I might have to shut down the stream and set up some new, uh, like, I don't know, tiles, I guess? The, the cards that I switch between for the stream. Because I don't think I have one to display a browser window. But maybe that's something I should do for the future. Anyway, oh, is a little dude coming to listen today, Bella? I don't know if you want to wait for him or if he's listening on yours. But I suppose we ought to get started. And there's the Discord. Gable, you should join the Discord. 
come uh, chat with us, hang out with us, and uh, request any books you'd like to hear. The rules for the story request are in the channel. He's smashing rocks? Is that like a punishment, or is he like... Maybe he's reenacting the Hulk. Is he like, Hulk smash? And then Kaplow. Nope, tea's still too hot. Ow. That's done. Ah. Don't mind me. Just burning my tongue. No bigs. All right, let's see. 47, chapter 47. Hulk smash style. <laughs> hey, Sparky, glad you could make it. Yeah, I shall endeavor not to burn myself. i tell you, this book, it, all the chapter numbers are in Roman numerals, and I thought I was good, and then I got some of the later ones, like, uh, shoot, I need to refresh my memory on how this works been a long time since I used the Roman numerate, numerate, numbering system. So, chapter 47, Hard Times. I shall never forget my new master. He had black eyes and a hooked nose. His mouth was as full of teeth as a bulldog's, and his voice was as harsh as the grinding of cartwheels over gravel stones. His name was Nicholas Skinner, and I believe he was the same man that poor C.D. Sam drove for. I've heard men say that seeing is believing, but I should say that feeling is believing. For much as I had seen before, I never knew till now the utter misery of a cab horse's life. Skinner had a low set of cabs and a low set of drivers. He was hard on the men, and the men were hard on the horses. In this place we had no Sunday rest, and it was in the heat of summer. Sometimes on a Sunday morning a party of fast men would hire the cab for the day. Four of them inside and another with the driver, and I had to take them ten or fifteen miles out into the country. And back again. Never would any of them get down to walk up a hill, let it be ever so steep, or the day ever so hot, unless indeed when the driver was afraid I should not manage it. And sometimes I was so fevered and worn that I could hardly touch my food. How I used to long for the nice bran mash with nitre in it that Jerry used to give us on Saturday nights in hot weather. They used to cool us down and make us so comfortable. Then we had two nights and a whole day for unbroken rest, and on Monday morning we were as fresh as young horses again. But here there was no rest, and my driver was just as hard as his master. He had a cruel whip with something so sharp at the end that it sometimes drew blood, and he would even whip me under the belly and flip the lash over at my head. Indignities like these took the heart out of me terribly, but still, I did my best and never hung back, for as poor Ginger said, it was no use. Men are strongest. My life was now so utterly wretched that I wished I might, like Ginger, drop down dead at my work and be out of my misery. And one day, my wish very nearly came to pass. I went on the stand at eight in the morning and had done a good share of work when we had to take a fare to the railway. A long train was just expected in, so my driver pulled up at the back of some of the outside cabs to take the chance of a return fare. It was a very heavy train, and as all the cabs were soon engaged, ours was called for. There was a party of four, a noisy, blustering man with a lady, a little boy and a young girl, and a great deal of luggage. The lady and the boy got into the cab, and while the man ordered about the luggage, the young girl came and looked at me. Papa, she said. I am sure this poor horse cannot take us and all our luggage so far. He's so very weak and worn out. Do look at him. Oh, he's all right, miss, said my driver. He's strong enough. The porter, who was pulling about some heavy boxes, suggested to the gentleman, as there was so much luggage, whether he would not take a second cab. Can your horse do it or can't he, said the blustering man. Oh, he can do it all right, sir. Send up the boxes, porter. He can take more than that and he helped to haul up a box so heavy that I could feel the springs go down. Papa, Papa, do take a second cab, said the young girl in a beseeching tone. I am sure we are wrong. I'm sure it's very cruel. Nonsense, Grace. Get in at once and don't make all this fuss. 
A pretty thing it would be if a man of business had to examine every cab horse before he hired it. The man knows his own business, of course. There, get in and hold your tongue. My gentle friend had to obey, and box after box was dragged up and lodged on top of the cab or settled by the side of the driver. At last, all was ready, and with his usual jerk at the rein and slash of the whip, we drove out of the station. The load was very heavy, and I had neither food nor rest since the morning, but I did my best, as I had always done, in spite of the cruelty and injustice. I got along fairly till we came to Ludgate Hill, but there, the heavy load and my own exhaustion were too much. I was struggling to keep on, goaded by constant chucks of the rain and use of the whip, when, in a single moment, I cannot tell how, my feet slipped from under me, and I fell heavily to the ground on my side. The suddenness and the force with which I fell seemed to beat all the breath out of my body. I lay perfectly still. Indeed, I had no power to move, and I thought now I was going to die. I heard a sort of confusion round me, loud, angry voices, and the getting down of the luggage, but it was all like a dream. I thought I heard that sweet, pitiful voice saying, Oh, that poor horse, it's all our fault. Someone came and loosened the throat strap of my bridle and undid the traces which kept the collar so tight upon me. Someone said, he's dead, he'll never get up again. Then I could hear a policeman giving orders, but I did not even open my eyes. I could only draw a gasping breath now and then. Some cold water was thrown over my head, and some cordial was poured into my mouth, and something was covered over me. I cannot tell how long I lay there, but I found my life coming back and a kind-voiced man was patting me and encouraging me to rise. After some more cordial had been given me, and after one or two attempts, I staggered to my feet, and was gently led to some stables which were close by. Here I was put into a well-littered stall, and some warm gruel was brought to me, which I drank thankfully. In the evening, I was sufficiently recovered to be led back to Skinner's stables, where I think they did the best for me they could. In the morning, Skinner came with a farrier to look at me. He examined me very closely and said, This is a case of overwork more than disease, and if you could give him a runoff for six months, he would be able to work again. But now there is not an ounce of strength in him. Then he must go to the dogs, said Skinner, said Skinner. I have no meadows to nurse sick horses in. He might get well or he might not. That sort of thing don't suit my business. My plan is to work them as long as they'll go, and then sell them for what they'll fetch, at the knackers or elsewhere. If he was broken-winded, said the farrier, you had better have him killed out of hand. But he is not. There is a sale of horses coming off in about ten days. If you rest him up and feed him up, he may pick, it, he may pick up, and you may get more than his skin is worth, at any rate. Upon this advice, Skinner, rather unwillingly, I think, gave orders that I should be well fed and cared for. And the stableman, happily for me, carried out the orders with a much better will than his master had in giving them. Ten days of perfect rest, Plenty of good oats, hay, bran mashes, with boiled linseed mixed in them, did more to get up my condition than anything else could have. These linseed mashes were delicious, and I began to think, after all, it might be better to live than to go to the dogs. When the twelfth day after the accident came, I was taken to the sale a few miles out of London. I felt that any change from my present place must be an improvement, so I held up my head and hoped for the best. Chapter 48. Farmer Thoroughgood and his grandson Willie. At this sale, of course, I found myself in company with the old broken-down horses, some lame, some broken-winded, some old, and some that I am sure it would have been merciful to shoot. The buyers and sellers, too, many of them, looked not much better off than the poor beasts they were bargaining about. There were poor old men trying to get a horse or pony for a few pounds that might drag about some little wood or coal cart. There were poor men trying to sell a worn-out beast for two or three pounds, rather than have the greater loss of killing him. Some of them looked as if poverty and hard times had hardened them all over. But there were others that I would have willingly used the last of my strength in serving. Poor and shabby, but kind and human, with voices I could trust. There was one tottering old man that took a great fancy to me, and I to him, but I was not strong enough. It was an anxious time. Coming from the better part of the fair, 
I noticed a man who looked like a gentleman farmer with a young boy by his side. He had a broad back and round shoulders, a kind, ruddy face, and he wore a broad-brimmed hat. When he came up to me and my companions, he stood still and gave a pitiful look round upon us. I saw his eye rest on me. I still had a good mane and tail, which did something for my appearance. I pricked my ears and looked at him. There's a horse, Willie, that has known better days. Poor old fellow, said the boy. Do you think, Grandpapa, he was ever a carriage horse? Oh, yes, my boy, said the farmer, coming closer. He might have been anything when he was young. Look at his nostrils and his ears, the shape of his neck and shoulder. There's a deal of breeding about that horse. He put out his hand and gave me a kind pat on the neck. I put out my nose and answered to his kindness. And the boy stroked my face. Poor old fellow. See, Grandpa, Grandpapa, how well he understands kindness. Could not you buy him and make him young again, as you did with Ladybird? My dear boy, I can't make all old horses young. Besides, Ladybird was not so very old, as she was run down and badly used. Well, Grandpapa, I don't believe that this one is old. Look at his mane and tail. I wish you would look into his mouth, and then you could tell. Though he is so very thin, his eyes are not so sunk like some old horses. The old gentleman laughed. Bless the boy. He is as horsey as his old grandfather. But do look at his mouth, Grandpapa, and ask the price. I am sure he would grow young in our meadows. The man who had bought me for sale now put in his word. The young gentleman's a real knowing one, sir. Now the fact is, this ear oss just pulled down with overwork in the cabs. He is not an old one, and I heard as how the veterinary should say that a six months runoff would set him upright, being as how his wind was not broken. I've had the tending of him these ten bit days past, and a gratefuler, pleasanter animal I have never met with, and twould be worth a gentleman's while to give a five pound note for him, and let him have a chance. I'd be bound he'd be worth twenty pounds next spring. The old gentleman laughed, and the little boy looked up eagerly. Oh, Grandpapa, did you not say the colt sold for five pounds more than you expected? You would not be poorer if you did buy this one. The farmer slowly felt my legs, which were much swelled and strained. Then he looked at my mouth. Thirteen or fourteen, I should say. Just trot him out, will you? I arched my poor thin neck, raised my tail a little, and threw out my legs as well as I could, for they were very stiff. What is the lowest you will take for him, said the farmer as I came back. Five pounds, sir. That was the lowest price my master set. Tis a speculation, said the old gentleman, shaking his head, but at the same time slowly drawing out his purse. Quite a speculation. Have you any more business here, he said, counting the sovereigns into his hand. No, sir. I can take him for you to the inn, if you please. Do so. I am going there now. They walked forward, and I was led behind. The boy could hardly control his delight, and the old gentleman seemed to enjoy his pleasure. I had a good feed at the inn, and was then gently ridden home by a servant to my new masters, and turned into a large meadow with a shed in one corner of it. Mr. Thoroughgood, for that was the name of my benefactor, gave orders that I should have hay and oats every night and morning, and the run of the meadow during the day. And you, Willie, said he, must take the oversight of him. I give him in charge to you. The boy was proud of his charge, and undertook it in all seriousness. There was not a day when he did not pay me a visit, sometimes picking me out from amongst the other horses, and giving me a bit of carrot or something good, or sometimes standing by me while I ate, whilst I ate my oats. He always came with kind words and caresses, and of course I grew very fond of him. He called me old crony, as I used to come to him in the field and follow him about. Sometimes he brought his grandfather, who always looked closely at my legs. This is our point, Willie, he would say. But he is improving so steadily that I think we shall see a change for the better in the spring. The perfect rest, the good food, the soft turf and gentle exercise soon began to tell on my condition and my spirits. I had a good constitution from my mother, and I was never strained when I was young so that I had a better chance than many horses, who had been worked before they came to their full strength. During the winter, my legs improved so much that I began to feel quite young again. The spring came round, and one day in March, Mr. Thurg determined that he would try me in the Phaeton. I was well pleased, and he and Willie drove me a few miles. 
My legs were not stiff now, and I did the work with perfect ease. He is growing young, Willie. We must give him a little gentle work now, and by midsummer he will be as good as Ladybird. He has a beautiful mouth and good paces. They can't be better. Oh, Grandpapa, how glad I am you bought him. So am I, my boy, but he has to thank you more than me. We must now be looking out for a quiet, genteel place for him where he will be valued. Chapter 49 My Last Home One day, during this summer, the groom cleaned and dressed me with such extraordinary care that I thought some new change me must be at hand. He trimmed my fetlocks and legs, passed the tar brush over my hooves, and even parted my forelock. I think the harness had an extra polish. Willie seemed half anxious, half merry, as he got into the chase with his grandfather. If the ladies take to him, said the old gentleman, they'll be suited, and he'll be suited. We can but try. At the distance of a mile or two from the village, we came to a pretty, low house, with a lawn and shrubbery at the front, and a drive up to the door. Willie rang the bell, and asked if Miss Blomfield or Miss Ellen were at home. Yes, they were. So whilst Willie stayed with me, Mr. Thoroughgood went into the house. In about ten minutes he returned, followed by three ladies. One tall, pale lady, wrapped in a white shawl, leaned on a younger lady with dark eyes and a merry face. The other, a very stately-looking person, was Miss Blomfield. They all came and looked at me and asked questions. The younger lady, that was Miss Ellen, took to me very much. She said she was sure she would, should like me. I had such a good face. The tall, pale lady said that she should always be nervous in riding behind a horse that had once been down, as I might come down again, and if I did, she should never get over the fright. You see, ladies, said Mr. Thoroughgood, many first-rate horses have had their knees broken through the carelessness of their drivers without any fault of their own, and from what I see of this horse, I should say that is his case, but of course I do not wish to influence you. If you incline, you can have him on trial, and then your coachman will see what he thinks of him. You have always been such a good adviser to us about our horses, said the stately lady, that your recommendation would go a long way with me. And if my sister Lavina sees no objection, we will accept your offer of a trial with thanks. It was then arranged that I should be sent for the next day. In the morning, a smart-looking young man came for me. At first he looked pleased, but when he saw my knees, he said in a disappointed voice, I didn't think, sir, you would have recommended my ladies a blemished horse like that. Handsome is that handsome does, said my master. You are only taking him on a trial, and I am sure you will do fairly by him, young man. And if he is not as safe as any horse you ever drove, send him back. I was led home, placed in a comfortable stable, fed and left to myself. The next day, when my groom was cleaning my face, he said, That, that is just like the star that Black Beauty had. He is much the same height, too. I wonder where he is now. A little further on, he came to the place of my neck where I was bled, and where a little knot was left in the skin. He almost started, and began to look me over carefully, talking to himself. White star on the forehead, one white foot on the offside, this little knot just in that place. Then, looking at the middle of my back, and as I am alive, there is that little patch of white hair that John used to call Beauty's three-penny bit. It must be Black Beauty. Why, Beauty! Beauty, do you know me? Little Joe Green that almost killed you? And he began patting and patting me as if he was quite overjoyed. I could not say that I remembered him, for now he was a fine, grown young fellow with black whiskers and a man's voice. But I was sure he knew me, and that he was Joe Green, and I was very glad. I put my nose up to him and tried to say that we were friends. I never saw a man so pleased. Give you a fair trial. I should think so indeed. I wonder who the rascal was that broke your knees, my old beauty. You must have been badly served out somewhere. Well, well, it won't be my fault if you haven't good times of it now. I wish John Manley was here to see you. In the afternoon, I was put into a low park chair and brought to the door. Miss Ellen was going to try me, and Green went with her. I soon found that she was a good driver, and she seemed pleased with my paces. I heard Joe telling her about me and that he was sure I was Squire Gordon's old black beauty. When we returned, the other sisters came out to hear how I had behaved myself, 
She told them what she had just heard and said, I shall certainly write to Mrs. Gordon and tell her that her favorite horse has come to us. How pleased she will be. After this, I was driven every day for a week or so, and as I appeared to be quite safe, Miss Lavinia at last ventured out in the small closed carriage. After this, it was quite decided to keep me and call me by my old name of Black Beauty. I have now lived in this happy place a whole year. Joe is the best and kindest of grooms. My work is easy and pleasant, and I feel my strength and spirits all coming back again. Mr. Thoroughgood said to Joe the other day, In your place he will last till he is twenty years old, perhaps more. Willie always speaks to me when he can, and treats me as a special friend. My ladies have promised that I shall never be sold, and so I have nothing to fear. And here my story ends. My troubles are all over, and I am at home, and often, before I am quite awake, I fancy I am still in the orchard at Birtwick, standing with my old friends under the apple trees. The End No, well, at least he came to a good place in the end. I hadn't read it in a long time, and I was kind of afraid he was just going to die there in the uh, cabbies. Alright, so what do you guys think? What game would be good? Let's play something. Could play some magic. Could do a Steam game. What sounds good to you guys? Yeah, it was more an admonition for the proper way of treating horses. Although um, she was both an abolitionist and a uh, shoot I could have told you a second ago um, anti-alcohol in favor of prohibition they had a specific name not prohibitionist it was something else anyway um, she had some very strong views uh she was originally a quaker but then they left the uh, society of friends um and actually most of the last part of this book uh was written when she was really really sick and it was uh dictated or written on scraps of paper that her mother then assembled into a book her mother was actually a uh, fairly well known at the time um author of children's novels Well, I mean, we could play Civ, but it's not like we have to finish a game. That's certainly an option, though. Cable, Panda, anything you guys want to see? I'm going to take some Dramamine so that uh, I have a few more options. Did I tell you that um, my primary care finally relented, admitted that I was right about what the uh, eye clinic said, and they're actually referring me to um, get pictures of my brain and stuff? So maybe we'll run this problem down and figure out what's going on. Hmm. What would you like to see, Vela, in terms of games?
Yeah, as long as they figure it out. I mean... Hopefully it's fixable. Let's see. Okay, we'll go look. Maybe we'll just try like a couple different games. If um, anybody has tabletop, we could play some Uno. See if we can actually keep all the cards on the table. But until Vela gets back, I'll show you guys this new game I've been looking at. It's called Ogopogo. It's a puzzle game. All about finding like visual palindromes. Which is kind of cool. Seems to be having problems identifying Ogopogo. Good enough for now. All right. So this is Ogopogo. It's still in development, but this is a free like demo of it. So the idea with this game, unlike Tetris and stuff like that, is you actually do want as many blocks on the screen as you can. And what you want to do is you want to find palindromes. So like green, purple, green is the same backwards and forwards right so that's a palindrome and you want to find like the longest ones you can so for instance we're going to go red purple green purple green purple red and that's going to give us quite a few points eliminates those blocks and we need to do it again best we can you can also do things like if we eliminate this one block here because one block is still a palindrome, right? Because forward and backward, same thing. So now we can go like that. And get a nice long one. Unfortunately, I don't know if we're going to make the uh, enough points. Because your goal is to get enough points to get to the next level. So we need seven more points.
Uh, oh, we made it. Just barely. That was close. I was worried. All right, let's see. So here we can go with the blue to purple, red, purple, blue. Hmm. How about this one? So red, purple, green. Red, green, green, purple, purple, red. You cannot go diagonal. It's got to be either horizontal or vertical, but you can snake around. So, let's see, we got the blue yellow here and blue yellow here, okay, get rid of these two. There we go. But we don't have the ability to get enough. So game over. Let's try it again. Kill some time until the Vela gets back. Shout out if you see any good patterns, by the way. Can we make that one any better? Hmm. I think so. So what if we come here, down and around, this way instead? Yeah, that's better. Ah, oh, we made it through two whole levels with that one. That's pretty cool. Do we have background music going for this one, by the way? Let's see. Yeah, you guys should be able to hear some music. All right. What do we got this time? Awesome. So what were the boys up to? Are they still breaking rocks? <laughs> they ran off? Uh-oh. Why they go and run off? Alright, let's go this way. Mm -hmm. 
if I get rid of those. And blue, blue, red, red. I think I got it. Yeah, there we go. That's a good one. Yeah, we lost a block. I seen Tetris, that would have been a loss right there. Oh, swing sets are cool. I just upgraded the uh little pod for the kiddo that I had into a uh, hammock chair inside so she's got like this um, reading nook with this uh, big like canvas hammock chair just surrounded by bookcases and most of the time I find her there reading I remember one time uh, she and I went to a restaurant both of us with uh, hard copy books in our hands and we sat down and read and this older couple um, bought our meal because they were so tickled that people were reading actual books. Public playground quality. That seems like a highly variable term, depending on where you are. Anyway, you guys have any ideas on uh, what game you want to see? Because this is just not the most exciting game, i, I got to be honest. It's fun. It's interesting. I could lose time in it. It's meditative, but exciting it is not. Basically, the more points you can get with a single move, the more blocks you preserve on the board, the easier it is to advance to higher and higher levels. Also, you don't want to create gaps in the middle, because then you can't complete lines. You want the blocks to mostly be like touching one another. These are some of the couple of things that I've learned in the short amount of time I've played this. Mostly by failing horribly. <laughs> enough. Awesome. But let's see. Panda, Sparky, Cable, if you're still here. Red, blue, blue. Oh, left side. Um... I don't see it. All right, I think we might have a time delay going. Yep, uh, there seems to be a significant time delay. I'm sorry, guys. Maybe I should pop into the Discord or something if you guys want to help out. 
Let's switch games real quick. Weird, it switched to be right back real quick, but not so quickly to uh, the game progress. Hmm. Anyway, I'm going to hop into one of the channels in the Discord if anybody wants to join me. an adorable picture, Villa. All right. Let's see. little dude. Heard you were having fun with the swings. Yeah, we can play Civ. Let's play Civ. Why not? Let's change our stream title too while we're at it. Stop, stop stealing the focus. Wait a minute, why is he in the doghouse for telling bad jokes? That should be encouraged. Bad jokes are amazing. They're the best. Bad jokes, best jokes. Puns, wordplay, cheesy jokes, dad jokes. All the good things. I need to make sure I don't accidentally dox myself. Hang on. I don't know, what is lazier? Easier is uh, not like an awful thing to send. What is lazier than a cat? 
uh, sloth. Not a sloth, maybe a sloth. He's always lying around. I don't know. That seems like a great joke. I don't know why you would be mad at him for that. I mean, I think you can agree that it's presumptive that it would be a house cat, right? When you just say a cat, most people think a house cat. Additionally, don't lions like mostly lays around and let the lionesses do all the hunting and bring them back food? So, I mean, it's like particularly egregiously lazy, isn't it? I don't know. Maybe this is me. All right. I went totally random, so I have no idea what was what I was going to be playing. So on a river, that's good. A lot of wheat. Not terrible. The plains tiles are kind of awful. Let's see, is this a hill? Yep. I hate to take out the production. I think this should give us two food, two production, though, once we settle. I'd rather it was on top of a luxury, because then you get the amenity bonus, whether you have the tech researched or not. But we'll go ahead and settle there. Hmm. We've got amber for mining, but not a lot of other things to mine. However, we might get some horses pop up, which are good food and production resources. So I think we'll go with that and hope to get a boost to our city. Scout. Try and get some settlements. Let's see what's out there. Already running into barbarians is not so good. Got to take out their encampment quick. Otherwise, it can really be a drain on our growth. Let's go and do one more scout. And then we'll try and get our first new city up. So we're going to come stand, let's see, is this a hill, woods, hills. We're going to stand on this hill tile and fortify, and that should be enough to let us resist this guy when he attacks, because he'll inevitably attack, and we'll keep healing every turn. The barbarian units don't heal every turn, though, so that should give us an advantage over them. And we've got horses over here. One, two, three. So we could put another city there and grab the horses and the wheat. I just hate all these flat plains. There's no defensive position. They're not great for growth. 
Alright. Well, let's go ahead and break for campuses and writing. Get our settler up. Nice. Boosted astrology and got a city state. For the moment, we'll just fortify those guys. to get this combat bonus here. Let me grab the faith so we can start working toward our pantheon. Only the males what? The male lions? Yeah, that's why I said lions versus lionesses. It's the right term, right? Lioness? But still. I feel that terrible jokes should be rewarded. So don't worry, little dude. I'm on your side. We'll go for foreign trade first because that caravan really helps with growth. We're still going to keep the um, fortification heal and just let him like wear himself away. Sweet. Second city state. Got the culture bonus from it. Nice, got a promotion. Hmm. I don't really have a lot of forests or hills, but we're gonna go with hills for the moment. Still stay fortified. It's kind of looking like a, we might be on the end of a little peninsula here. Not a ton of room to expand, but since we don't have any really good geographical choke points or defensive points, it's probably good that we're not right next to another empire at first. The real question is going to be whether we get screwed on some of the important like mid-game resources like niter or uh, oil. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and eliminate that unit and grab. Sweet, got a builder out of that. You stay fortified. That should be enough to keep him from killing the warrior, and he'll either kill himself or be prey to the scout. Farm that tile. Boost up irrigation. Um, China gets more from the tech boosts than other civs, so it's really important to hit your tech boost with China. They also have a boost to getting wonders. Yeah, see, that's coast. So yeah, we're just at the southern... I mean, unless there's something sneaky like a little land bridge here. I kind of doubt it. Then yeah, it's just us here. Promotion, nice. I pretty much always take battle cry because it feeds right into commando and I can get that plus one movement. Which is pretty stellar. Wrap this guy and take him north and see what we can find up there. Now we just wipe out the camp. That got us our third barbarian kill and the clearing the camp so we got two tech boosts out of it. I suppose it tech boost and an inspiration, but six of one half does the other. Alright, our first city we're going to go ahead and put there. It's 
a little risky doing an unescorted settler, but we've had visibility on the whole area. So you can actually see any barbarian encampments that pop up in these uh, ones that don't have current visibility. And they can't pop up in the areas where you have active like sight on them. I believe we get bonuses toward making wonders, so let's go ahead and grab the wonder. Those will also play into the culture um, development because they give big boosts for adjacency to uh, theater square districts. This will be a good one for our um, port where we put Liang because she has this uh, improvement that she can unlock called fisheries and they get huge boost to the food and stuff if they are adjacent to water resources on coast. So right here, for example, it'll get bonuses from all three of these. This one will get bonuses from these two, this one from these two. So it'll be a really good place to uh, to put them. We can probably put like a harbor here. Mm, somebody else built the wonder. Oh well. Uh, we don't have our pantheon yet, so I'm going to leave this in place. Not really building. Naval units might slow some barbarians. We'll leave all our policies in place for the moment. If we can keep most of the content continent that we're on um, actively visible. We won't be plagued by barbarians. Although some saves where you get like uh, oh, bonuses and such for killing barbarians, like a Gorgo, she gets some culture per kill and that kind of thing. We might go ahead and leave one around to farm, but not so much with this stuff. Good great craftsman. And then I guess we'll build another farm. Wait for him to move his units out of the way. We'll definitely want to control Mohandaro because that's the choke point to the rest of the continent. So we definitely need to uh, have control of this area right here. So that's really our only natural barrier. Okay. Now let's get a builder up. Hmm. Normally I'd send it internal. But completing that quest would be really nice. And like I said, we need to control that city-state. So finishing the quest and getting the extra envoy is really valuable. And let's go ahead and do another settler. Get our expansion going. And I'm just leaving these units to maintain visibility. Let's go ahead and get the horses. I'm going to go off of riding and onto astrology because we should be meeting another sieve shortly right up here, which will finish out science. I mean, baby puppy pictures aren't that bad. Saw a puppy yesterday that looked like a bear. 
pretty adorable. Alright, well, again, I mean, good for recon experience, I guess. We're going to um, do this until this hollow bar that you see here looks like it'll complete the tech and then we'll switch to something else because as soon as the combined population of these two equals six, it'll finish out that tech. So that'll save us a couple of turns researching. Just go ahead and hang out there. Man, there's going to be a beast of like get through there if we can control this. Oh, is that the new uh, puppy that your in-laws have? Horseback got boosted. Your new sister. Mean. Puppies are adorable, but they're not people. I guess we're going to hang out right there for a minute. Damn. Wish I could just pass through and grab that encampment. Oh well. Grab our mining so we can finally get that luxury because we'll need the amenity soon. Oh no, flooding! Good thing it's not affecting my city. <laughs> Floods, then a drought. Yeah, look at that. We completed early empire. Go ahead and grab state workforce. We're trying to get political philosophy, which will get a boost if we can meet one more city state as well. All right, let's go ahead and open up bronze working, get iron revealed. And there's our pantheon. Religious settlements is gone. That's the one with the free settler. So that's too bad. And wonder production is nice, and that would stack with the bonus from being China. But I'm on Emperor difficulty on quick speed, so might not get a chance to get those anyway. Get a decent sized desert. So adjacency from desert wouldn't be bad for the holy sites same with tundra but i think i'm going to go with god of the sea because despite being landlocked at the moment especially over here we're gonna have a lot of fishing boats and given the choke point there we're gonna want to do a lot of water expansion. All right. Do Magnus first because his first promotion that we get, which we should get in like seven turns, will let me um, reduce the cost of settlers. They won't cost us population anymore. Speaking of Q. And, excuse me, I guess we'll put it up here. Yeah.
Hmm. Not a lot of bonuses to be had. Where to put this one? Let's see. Two, three. So we end up with a city like right up here. Yeah, let's put it there. That'll do. I'm really kind of shocked I haven't met any other sieves yet. A lot of resources right up here. I think that's a lake. Nope, that's coast. So you see how that hollow section covers the whole rest of the wheel? So we can switch off of that now and go ahead and go to drama and poetry for the moment. Man, are we like on an isolated continent or something? That's specialty district and there it goes finish state workforce for us. Change policies. And we'll take... And we'll take reduced unit maintenance, get a little more gold. And increase settler production. Yep. And then... There's the promotion for it doesn't consume pop. <laughs> and we're going to go ahead and do government plaza here. I hear a Vela. Vela came to say hi to me in Discord. She's the only one who loves me. Nobody else loves me. They didn't come say hi. I'm going to go ahead and finish up writing just because maybe we aren't going to meet another sieve. Oh my god, there's a little dude too. Ooh, we got a relic. And Vela's dying laughing. Her son just like burst into the Discord with a really enthusiastic high. It was adorable. I'm playing Civ, because that was the only game anybody asked about. So popped it up. And Civ, we try to take over the world. What, what? <laughs> Have you never watched Pinky in the Brain? I'm disappointed in you, Vela. What kind of parenting have you been doing? No Pinky, no Brain? Shame, shame, shame. All right, 
found my next city. Hoot. Mm, what to build? I guess a builder. Feudalism gets a boost if you complete six farms, which is part of why I was building all these farms, even though I don't have the people to work them yet. Man, so much empty space. Did something happen and there's not like competitors? No, there's definitely competitors. Now I'm apparently dead last in science, which is not good. World bots? Never heard of it. Like bots spun around. Didn't that make him dizzy? <laughs> B-O-O-X? Like box? I don't know if it's wrath or sass. Got the sassy pants on. Somebody used to say. Thank you. Oh, I don't have the building yet. What did I miss that gives the build? <laughs> but it's the government. Okay. Shrine, then a bunch of prayers. Because we want to get our great profit. Hopefully. And just one. Oof. Killed my scout. That wasn't nice. Should get my religion soon, so that should be a good one. I hope. horse camp over here. That's going to hurt. Well. I guess it's time to get some archers going. Ouch. That was nasty. Flood took out my trader. Got all these bad guys around. I think we'll 
we'll just wait because we don't want him to die. You know, the background, lo-fi, and the sub music are probably conflicting. I should probably turn that off. Or it's already off. That works. Sweet. Government unlocked. Yeah, I'll go with that. yourselves a little stronger versus all these barbs. Let's get our harbor going too. And mysticism. these prayers anymore. Do you need to repair stuff though? Let's leave it at that for the moment. And now we get our religion. Bonus points if any of you know where uh, that quote's from. Our adjacency bonuses are terrible, so we're not picking that. Oh. 
No wonders. The Lion of Love. Bonus points if you uh, know what that's a reference to. Although I'm pretty sure I told you, Vela, so I don't think it counts for you. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Could get an initial boost right here from Reliquaries. Not sure actually what to grab. Most of the time when I have a religion, I have a really big set of adjacency bonuses, but they're just garbage this time. Somebody already take Watts. All right, we'll take Tithe. It'll be all about the gold. Okay, you have fun playing outside, little dude. Thanks for hanging out for a bit. Was it actually called Eurovision Sparky or was it Euro Song? But. If you're talking about the Will Ferrell movie, yeah, that's the right one. There's a lot of Will Ferrell movies that I can't stand, but that one was pretty good. All right. So. I can go ahead and switch. We really need to get our expansion back on track. Let's send him back to heal. We'll be able to get a harbor here shortly. Okay. I kill st still can't get the government plaza building. What am I missing? Do I get from them? Oof, big baboom. I want to keep that. There we go. Fine. There. 
everybody build faster. Four turns will switch. That I need to boost out a bunch of uh, builders too. Nice. All right. Just lock that scout in right there. it up to our capital and help it grow faster. So it's tempting with the plus four, but if I want to build the mausoleum of Holocarnassus, then I need to be adjacent to a shore location. And if I want to build um, there's a few things that I'd like to build that I need adjacent water tiles for. So, or at least coastal tiles. In this case, I'm actually going to take. Hang on. One, two. Yeah, I can put the mausoleum there. Hmm. This is coast. Yeah. Uh -uh. Must be adjacent. Must be built on coast. Put it there. Well, Carnassus, Colossus, Great Lighthouse. Yeah, okay, I'll put it there. our scouts back down here so we don't get another barb camp. Leave our warrior right there for the same reason. Settler production here. Again, I often grab this, but there's no point since my adjacency bonuses are hot garbage. But we can speed up our shipbuilding. I'm going to grab that for the governor title. 
We definitely need our campuses built. All right, so Government Plaza is here. I want to put Aqueduct, Dam, Aqueduct. So this will be um, Industrial Zone, Industrial Zone. So I don't want to build neither of those. But I can put it right here. That'll at least get bonuses for being adjacent to districts. Mm, we'll save our envoy. Getting distracted from building those settlers, but I want to get the religion too. All right, we'll do religion, but then a whole bunch of settlers. Mm, fisheries. Now we've got visibility over the whole island. Or not island. It's kind of an island. Almost an island. Peninsula. Whatever. Still saving our envoys. Though we've got two of them now. Ah, Bedler, builder to fix all that stuff. There's our aqueduct. falling behind on everything it's part of the problem with being so far from everybody in an emperor level game you don't get that early aggression to offset the computer's advantages and so you start falling behind pretty quick Undon's probably going to get pretty big, so we'll put him there. He gives big boosts to science and culture based on city population, so really you want to put him in one of your biggest cities.
Eurovision Song Contest. That's probably why I keep thinking it's Euro Song. Since the words are like literally smashed together. Alright, so. Oh, I can't. I don't have the money for that yet. All right. Well, let's build a builder then. Got the extra error score because I rebuilt after a flood. Which the game really likes. Let's build up here instead. Wow, I like that better. It'll grow a lot better. Anything I put over here is gonna grow to like three pop and then nothing. Aqueduct right here. Get a harbor going. This is why I built that government plaza and the other building because you get a free builder builder with every new uh, city you found. Oh, yeah. Need to get the rest of my religion. because we'll build Petra in the city I found up here. We'll make it really a lot stronger. Let's evangelize. All right. What do we want? Stupas could be good. Spreading well is good too, though. Let's get a spread boost. And. Yeah, we'll get the stupa. Hey, look at that. One more era score, and I will get. Never mind. No, I won't. Rip. Oh, well. Let's see. I keep on great scientist. I haven't really built the naval units yet, but I need to. Yeah. missionaries Gonna start getting all my cities to believe this is coast right
something that I'm missing? Spot for the mausoleum. Oh, another trader sounds good. Nice. There's that fisher I was talking about. See how it's already tied for largest city in my empire? It's gonna keep going. I can only vote for myself, really. There we go. No, still saving envoys. Converts in two turns, six turns. Let's go convert Mohindar. Pretty poor city choices here. Let's send that one up north too. No. Let's build Petra here. That seems like a good spot. Jadon. I think he yang because we want to get Petra built and then Jadon. Come on, believe in the lion of love. I think this is the first time I've streamed Civ. Like, I know I've done it in the Discord a little bit. And people wanted to pop in and watch some of us playing, but I think this is the first time I've, like, streamed it, streamed it live on Twitch. You guys enjoying it? Yeah, I cut half the time off Petra.
Ooh, the Inca. Where are you? Okay, I definitely got to settle this. Looks like currently I have this whole continent to myself. So I definitely want to capitalize on that. And do culture first, because that'll get me closer to another title. Definitely the scout up there. So let's see, barbarian. Oops, bloodings. Glad the settler wasn't caught in that. Definitely need to get that dam. There's my mausoleum. It's such a good combo, Liang and the mausoleum. Makes all my water tiles super strong. Then all I have to get is, um, oh, which one is it? There's one of the um, infrastructure city states that gives all your shallow water tiles like plus one uh, production or something like that. It's just a super strong little combo. Yeah, let's keep going with that for now. Horses for... Yeah, sure. I'm not really using them. You can have six horses. Must be really desperate for horses. District adjacency bonus here. I don't want to put it here because that's where one of my industrial zones is going to be. Let's boost our faith production. Where should I put this one? I can put it here. It's not a bad spot. One there and one there. Yeah, let's do that.
maximize our city density here. Actually, let's offset that one just one. So we put this one here. We can build a canal on either side and bridge these two bodies of water and cut off a lot of sailing around. Then this one can put a canal right here. And so we can go here, here. That'll be good. And then this is still far enough away. This is still far enough away. And we can cram one more right where those barbs are. Yeah, that'll work. Ooh, great admiral. Nice. To put down the classes there. And just fall asleep. No, put the Ad Grand Admiral to sleep. So let the Grand Admiral just fall asleep. Not me. Sorry. 
didn't mean to cause confusion. I mean, oh, I'm so sleepy. Sorry, not really. <laughs> hey, that's a lie. I haven't done that. I don't know what you're talking about. Making things up. Making things up, trying to get me in trouble. Make me look bad. It's so mean. Man, I was like... Vela said I was falling asleep on stream. She mean. See, now they all know how mean you are. Big meanie meanie head. <laughs> now they're ganging up on me Drea just popped in to accuse me of it too shame on you guys how could you say such things about me that's so mean I don't know what you're talking about I am certain that didn't happen. Who are you saying just stop to, little dude? Ah, oh, yes, little dude's on my side. He's telling him to stop bullying me. I was an intervention. I'm not doing anything bad. What is it you want me to stop? Do you want me to stop streaming? This seems counterproductive. All right. Well, in two minutes, you have a wonderful night because it's obviously bedtime for you, little dude. So glad I picked this as my streaming name. Crickets. You clipped out there, Bella. I heard disagree, but that was it. Ah, ooh, here's another player. Finally, I guess I'm not alone on this continent. So I definitely need to control the choke points. Hockey. Another sieve. Man, they all like my horses. I'll take it.
Looks like I'm going to need to do more apostles too. city right over in here somewhere. So I can put the canal here, an encampment here. Then I'll be able to city bombard from both to defend. I really like my horses. Yes, you can have all the horses. Ooh, I did it. Look at this beautiful building. Hey, Bella. Looks a little bit like our uh, base on Ark on that one server. I mean, a little bit. Not a lot, but a little. Ooh, so many inspirations. Hmm. All right, let's see. I've got four envoys stacked up. So let's go ahead and do extra gold for now. Let's boost production in all my cities. Seems good for the moment. Okay, what now? Yeah, look at my water tiles now, fella. These are like 11 yield tiles. It's amazing. What happened? I mean, obviously it obviously worked. But also ouch. I'm sorry, that sounds painful. He didn't expand. It seems odd. Maybe there were a bunch of barbarians. Let's 
construction. Walls. It's going to be difficult to reinforce these cities from down here, though. It's such a pain in the butt getting through that passage. Okay. Well, hope little dude does a good night, and I'll see you when you get back. You still hanging out with me, Drea? No, I think I lost the Drea. Oh, well. Oh, she's here. Okay. Ah, well, I mean, it'll happen. Got one, two. All right, so I need to still need a few more settlers. And we built the dam, right? Better build those walls. Nice, another choke point. Okay. Oh man, did we not get any niter? Oh, okay, there's a niter.
All right. Let's at least make our pastures better. is likely to be city center. The AI has a bias toward that. Oh, campus. That's different. But I'll take it. Let's get some naval units out. Send it back to the capital so we can speed up this uh, expansion route by getting a frickin' road in. And we'll remove the improvement, then we'll harvest that wheat. And then the industrial zone will go in. Industrial zone in. And we should get you aqueduct and industrial zone. speed up all the things. Mm -hmm. New government. Yes, please. Let's see. All these new cities will need to build walls.
great scientists and trade routes. Hmm. Yes, found the city. Work those. Work that. Work those. That was a long pause. Whatever. It's not sacrilege, we just believe differently than you. I mean, maybe we're coming to convert your intolerant ass, but whatever. Send you off to explore. Harvest these trees. with district Assholes coming to try and take my spots. Is 
This really sucks that it's fucking Dido. Huh. I'm actually gonna make it more difficult. Do you know like Dido trying to come over here? Let's see if I can't body block her a little bit. Yeah, sure, you can have my extra diamonds, whatever. Colossus. <coughs> oh, my tea's all gone. I just thought this was a really cool wonder. Okay, so one little isolated unit of the Great Wall is not very impressive looking. Oh well. Some amount of gold. What can we do with it? Let's get that. Courser. Oh, is she not trying to build on the coast? That's interesting.
let's get up there. Yes, more great people. Basically just trying to occupy all the spots that Dido might try to take. So that I can settle my stuff before she does. What I really want to do is keep her off of the coast. Because she's got a special ability if she settles a coastal city then it has perfect loyalty. I don't really care about that. Universities, though. Yes, theocracy. Bring it up there. Keep the great scientist points. And we'll keep all that going for now. Seems like it's working, shying her off for the moment. 
Fingers crossed. Mm. This is kind of like um, Petra, but for Tundra. It's maybe sticking a city down here wouldn't be such a horrible thing. City needs housing. You need walls. You stay put. You stay put. I think this should trap them. Not a hundred percent sure though. Yeah, let's get a canal built. And you build walls. I guess you go there. Apostle. Workshop. 
another trader. Wow. Ten. Ten envoys to take that over. Oof. I'll take the production bonuses anyway. Golden Age, finally. Grab monumentality with that, I think. Let's me buy settlers and builders for cheap for faith. Printing press. And you. Way behind on science. there for a minute. Get all these missionaries out there. Spreads. I mean, I don't recognize that you're the masters of the heights. I just don't have any freaking mountains. Who'd I get? Magellan, right on. Go ahead and build our uh, city for the nighter. Okay. So get a copy of the luxury in my cap. Got wheels. So I guess pearls. Talk about barbarians close to my home. Oh, these guys. Whatever. Alright, I need shipyard. 
to unblock Venetian Arsenal, right? Oh, I need an industrial zone. Okay. So put an industrial zone there. Hey, welcome back. I'm sad that you didn't miss me, though. It's not a very nice thing to say. Oh, uh, okay. You mean I'm still streaming, and you're glad I'm still streaming. I may be a goober, but I don't think that's a bad thing. By the way, since nobody else is really in the Discord except Drea, I'm being called a goober. Drea's being mean. She's picking on me. I know. But Drea said, Drea said the mean thing. She would be a mean. Long Z. Run away, Apostle. Oof. Let's drought. My inbox? Which inbox? No, which inbox? Oh, uh, my DMs? Somebody crawling up in my DMs? Oh, there's adorable puppy face. You should put that in the uh, Where the Fluffy Things Are channel. This is an adorable little puppy. So cute. I mean, you send bad things to everybody's DMs, Drea. <laughs> but puppy face is pretty adorable, I gotta admit. You know, some of this music reminds me just a little bit of Ro Ro Rasputin. Just a little hint of it. Anybody else think that? You don't know what Ro Ro Rasputin is? Oh, Veli, you gotta fix that. Okay, good. Nice. All right. Can I buy walls? No. But I can buy a granary and a monument. Couple of mines. And you 
build what? Hmm. Anybody build that faster? Not looking good. Ooh, 19 turns for you. Yeah, I think so. Not by that. The watermill. And greenery. builder. Does that actually count as a different river down there? there. You'll definitely build ancient walls. You Out of that apostle. And you are going to start working on Basil's Cathedral. anyway. Oh my god, are you playing Ark again? No, that's Minecraft, right? That's the one they added. There's too many games full of Pokemon on this track. Where'd you go, little apostle dude?
Oof. I think it's time to run away. victory point anyway. I mean, can't you fish like in any body of water in Minecraft? Okay, so how do you get live fish if it's not through fishing? Is there a new mechanic for getting fish? Mm hmm. Really? Okay. Let's change. Okay. Do the fishing poles still work? Okay. But the cast dead fish? Okay. Sorry, I have not been keeping up to date with Minecraft updates at all. Nope, I'm not trading away my niter. I need my boom booms and my bang bangs. Ooh, I finally got a golden age. Sweet. Oh, but the one that lets me buy freaking settlers is not here. <sighs> Frustration. not totally sure how that applies but okay take your word for it so it's not really about me it's about you and getting your cake and eating it too Nah, I don't think so. I think the cake is a lie. It is not about me. It is a total lie. I think you just want cake. Cake. The cake may exist. The cake may exist, but it's still a lie because it's got nothing whatsoever to do with me. Therefore, embodied the lie that somehow it might have something to do with me. I know I'm not getting any. Okay.
by eating them yourself? The cake is never a lie. <laughs> I'm not sure that's true, Sparky. No, I am not going to give you all that. For... Why do you have oil already? I am so far behind. So far behind. This is disgusting. Okay. Totally screwed here. Um, yeah. It would have gone great, like... 50 turns ago. Now, not as great. I'm not totally sure that's true. Seems, I don't know, dubious at best. He's admiring my treasury. Thinks I have a mighty fine income. I know. You know, I actually don't think I have it marked mature right now. Also, though, that settler is really expensive. All the destroyed farms from one little blizzard.
Let's go extra science. Privateers, yes, please. Lost my parcel, not good. Have I built a wonder in this one yet? some building that there. Whatever. Let's try it. Alright, let's see. You better walls. Fixy, fixy. And I think we'll actually send that to Beijing. We get coal. Harbor. Oh, I'm not going to give you niter from iron? Yes, let me give you the thing to make guns in exchange for the thing to make swords. 
definitely going to happen. Great plan. But no. That's odd. I already built a canal, but I haven't unlocked it yet. Oh, what? Okay. Game officially got weird. I'm sorry, anybody else having uh problems hearing me Ooh. Hmm. Hmm. okay say so I have no dropped frames so the Vikings. Hello, Mr. Viking. Where did I meet you? Oh, how far behind am I? 34 texts. Three and a half hours of Civ, or I guess two and a half hours of Civ, hour of reading. Definitely didn't realize that uh, I've been playing Civ this long. Launch the Inquisition.
think Dida just accused me of smooth talking my way to world domination. Which actually I'm totally okay with. I mean, given the option, sure. There's a what, what, for what, fella? You sounded like Leia with the voice distorter when she was in Jabba's palace. Yoto, Yoto. Says he's got a thermal detonator. I think I got the wonders. Rip. I thought that might have been something like what you were saying. Almost terrifying? Why is that? Yes, but why? Okay. Mm-hmm.
all the Inquisitors. Well, I think I'm going to wrap this up soon. Yeah, no problem, Kevo. I'm glad you're enjoying them. Thanks for hanging out. And uh, do join the Discord if you get a chance. Let us know what you'd like to hear read. I have to pick a new book for the Wednesday stream. Yeah, this seems like a good stopping point. I'll come back to this if uh, you guys ask for Civ again. But let's go ahead and close it out. Who's streaming right now? How about a Star Wars painting? And some chill music. Ooh, Twitch is a little fuzzy. All right, we're going to go raid Russell Stewart and his, whoops, if I type the command in properly. Yeah, of course, always, Vela. I like hanging out with you guys and reading and drinking tea. Thanks for joining me. I hope to see you again soon.